In this presentation, I will teach you how to design the clocked sequential circuits. It is a very important topic in the digital electronics course and the only thing you have to do is to remember these nine steps that I have already written on the board. I will also follow these steps to get to the result in this presentation and definitely requires time to obtain the result by using these nine steps. So this presentation will be a little bit lengthy. So we will start from the step number one. Let's read what it says. A state diagram or timing diagram is given which describes the behavior of the circuit that is to be designed. So initially you are having a question and in that question a state diagram or a timing diagram is given and uh, this state or timing diagram definitely describes the behavior of the circuit that we need to design and ultimately we want this circuit we want uh, this circuit by using the flip-flops as it is a sequential circuit we require the flip-flop and also some combinational logic is there so I have already made the state diagram that we will solve in this presentation we have to find out the circuit for this state diagram so our step number one is over we have our state diagram now we will move to step number two and step number two says obtain the state table so for this state diagram we have to obtain the state table so let's make the state table for it the first column of the state table gives us the present state so i will write ps for it ps is for the present state and in present state i will take qa QB as the two outputs of the flip-flop and they are making the two bits of the present state because you can see the states are four and each of the state is represented by a two-bit binary number 00101101 that's why I have taken QA QB which represents the two bits of the present state now in the next column I will have my next state and the next state is evaluated when the input x is 0 as well when input x is 1 so when input x is 0 the next state will be QA plus QB plus similarly when input x is equal to 1 I will have QA plus QB plus this plus sign represents it is the next state and in this way we have the second column now we have the output column the output is let's say y and it is also dependent upon the input when input is 0 and when input is 1 so we have uh, made our state table now the next thing that we have to do is to fill this state table so first I will fill all the states 0 0 0 1 1 0 one one now when input x is zero and i am on zero 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 is my this first state and if input is zero this represents the input x and this represents the output y so when input x is zero you can see this arrow is on the same state which shows that i am on zero zero and i am going to be on zero zero it means the next state is the same as zero zero so zero zero qa plus is zero as well as qb plus is zero now when x is equal to 1 and you are on 0 0 we are on 0 0 and when x is equal to 1 I will be on 0 1 that's why the next state will become 0 1 for the input when it is 1 similarly we can check for 0 1 you are here and if the input is equal to 0 you can see input is equal to 0 you are directed to 1 1 so the next state will be 1 1 when input is 0 and uh, I will also write the output in at the same time here the output was 0 so 0 and uh, for this output is also 0 so again 0 and for this case output is 0 so 0 now we will see when input is 1 x is equal to 1 and we are on 0 1 so again I am going to be on 0 1 you can see input is 1 and it is directed on the same state so we are going to be on the same state with output equal to 0 so the same state it means 0 1 and output is 0 we will check when the state is 1 0 if input is equal to 0 we are going to be on same state so 1 0 when input is 0 and the output is 1 in this case so I will write 1 here and when the input is equal to 1 it means this case I will move to 0 0 so I will move to 0 0 when input is 1 with output equal to 1 so output is 1 now we will check for the last case when the state is 1 1 if the input is 1 I will be on the same state and if the input is 0 I will go to 1 0 
so when input is 0 1 0 and when input is 1 1 1 the output is 0 so 0 here and again 0 when the input is 0 so 0 in this way we have completed this state table and now we will move to step number 3 step number 2 is done so step number 2 is completed and step number 3 says the number of states can be reduced by the state reduction method we have already studied the state reduction method and if you want to reduce the number of state actually you cannot want it if you want to check it it doesn't depend upon your will that you can reduce the states definitely there may be a chances of the reduction then only the state can be reduced so we have to see whether we can reduce the states or not and the process to do this is to check the the next state and the output if the next state for the two states are same for example if I check for let me change the color for this purpose for example if I check for this 0 0 state and 0 1 state then the next state of 0 0 must be same as the next state of 0 1 so they must be same and also the output of 0 0 and 0 1 will be same and we can see there is no such cases in this state table so there is no state reduction possible so the step number three is also completed and we cannot reduce these states furthermore they are already reduced you can check 0 0 0 1 1 1 0 1 there is no next state same there is no 0 0 in this whole column repeated and there is no 1 1 in this whole column repeated that's why there is no next state same for the two present states so we cannot reduce it it's very simple so we are done with this step number three the states cannot be reduced furthermore now the step number four says do the state assignment if required now let me explain this point in brief the state assignment is a very simple thing you have to just assign the states equivalent to the binary code for example if i have four states and let's say the name of this state is a the name of this state is let's say this state is b this is c and this is d then what you have to do you have to assign the binary number so that you can do the operations on them so that you can find out the input values of your flip-flop you cannot operate with a b c d they are not the numbers you cannot have the input of the flip-flops when you will operate with a b c d so you have to do something so that you have the binary numbers representing your states so we will do a simple thing a is equal to 0 0 b is equal to 0 1 c is equal to 1 0 and d is equal to 1 1 this is called as the state assignment but in this particular example we don't have to do the state assignment because already 0 0 1 0 0 1 and 1 1 is assigned to these states so we don't require to do the state assignment here but in many cases they just give the states name by using the alphabet so in that case you have to do the state assignment so we are done with this step number four we don't have to do the state assignment I'm going a little bit fast in this intermediate steps because you have already learned these things and it is not required to explain this more here so I'm going a little bit fast don't worry I will slow down when the important point comes let's see what is step 5 says determine the number of flip-flops required and assign the letter symbols Wow this is the good point that you have to see there are four states and this four states can be implemented by using the two flip-flops so we are going to use two flip-flops and I will give the name to the flip-flops the last sentence says assign letter symbols for example I will say my flip-flop 1 is A and my flip-flop 2 is B this is the name for my flip-flops and depending upon this name I have given Q and QB QA is the output of the A flip-flop QB is the output of the B flip-flop so this is the way to do the assignment of the letter symbol to our flip-flop so we are done with this step number five we have determined the number of flip-flops I'm going to use two flip-flops because four states are there and I have already assigned the letter symbols you can see from the state table Q A B A and B are the assigned letter symbols to my two flip-flops let's move to step number seven and this is the most important steps out of all the nine steps it says derive the circuit excitation table from the state table this is my state table and by using this state table we have to find out the circuit excitation table so i will make circuit excitation table here c i r c u i t circuit excitation table 
and the first column of this circuit excitation table is for the present state the second column is for the input x so let's make it fast I will have the eight possible combinations for my QA QB and definitely for X I will write X here now I will write the eight possible combinations 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 1 these are the four combinations now we have 1 0 0 1 0 1 and the last two combinations are 1 1 0 and 1 1 1 so these are the eight possible combinations of the present state and the input x now we have the next column giving us the next state giving us the next state and next state is q a plus and q b plus then we have the flip flop inputs the flip flop inputs and finally we have the output y so let me separate them by the straight lines and then we will move forward to fill it okay now we can use this state table to fill the circuit excitation table when the present state is 0 0 and input x is also 0 the next state you can see from here is 0 0 so I will write 0 0 here similarly if the present state is 0 0 and input is 1 this case present state is 0 0 and input is 1 I have the next state QA plus and QB plus equal to 0 1 so I will write 0 1 in the same way we will fill for 0 1 when the input is 0 and 1 you can see 1 1 and 0 1 so I will directly write it 1 1 0 1 and then we have 1 0 and 0 0 so 1 0 and then 0 0 and for the final two cases we have 1 0 and 1 1 so 1 0 and 1 1 so this is how we have to fill the next state in the circuit excitation table in the same way I will fill the values of my output 0 0 0 0 so four zeros are there 0 0 0 and then 0 then we have 1 1 0 0 so 1 1 0 0 so we are done with the informations that we can have from the state table now we have to use the properties of the flip flop that we have to implement and as I have told earlier I'm going to implement this circuit by using the T flip flop so we need the truth table of the T flip flop to get the flip flop inputs and the flip flop inputs are definitely the two inputs are there the first one is TA and the second one is TB. TA is the input of my A flip flop and TB is the input of my B flip flop. To get the input TA we have to see QA and QA plus the present state and the next state of the A flip flop and you already know the truth table for the T flip flop is clock T QN plus 1 where QN plus 1 is the next state if clock is 0 whatever be the value of T the output is going to be the same which means the memory if clock is high T is low it means the output is again the memory and if the clock is high and T is also high it means it is toggling QN complement QN QN plus 1 and then T 0 0 0 1 one zero one one if qn is zero and qn plus one is zero so it means t is zero if qn is zero and qn plus one is one it means t is one and if qn is one tn plus one is zero again t is one and if both are same it is zero so this is a basic thing that you have learnt in the t flip flop now we will use to get the values of ta and tb so first we have to see qa and qa plus qa is my present state and qa plus is my next state if qa is 0 and QA plus is 0 you can see from here T is going to be 0 so TA is 0 if QA is 0 and QA plus is 0 again T is 0 if QA is 0 and QA plus is 1 you can see from here T is going to be 1 QA is 0 QA plus is 0 again 0 both are same QA is 1 and QA plus is 1 from the last case you can see T is 0 and uh, if QA is 1 QA plus is 0 again T is 1 
and uh, let me generalize it we are not going to do it every time you can see t is the XOR combination of QN plus 1 and uh, when there is XOR combination it is very clear that it is the odd ones detector whenever there is odd ones in the input we have output is high so we will just check the odd number of ones and we will have our flip-flop inputs 1 1 even number of ones so 0 1 1 again even number of ones then 0 now we will do the same step for the TB and in this case and in this case we will see QB and QB plus so 0 0 it means 0 0 1 odd number of ones it means 1 1 1 even when 0 1 1 again 0 0 0 it means 0 0 0 it means 0 1 0 odd number of ones then 1 and finally 1 1 it means 0 so we have completed this step number 7 and we have our circuit excitation table a very important step now the step number 8 says obtain the expression for the circuit output and the flip-flop input you can make the k-map for this purpose but in this case I don't see so many ones in my input and output that's why I'm not going to use the k-map but I will write directly the values by the boolean algebra ta is high at this point and at this point and for this I have qa complement let me slide this board for this I have qa complement qb and qb and x complement and x complement similarly for this one I have qa qb complement x so qa qb complement x so this is the function for ta you cannot minimize it further so I will stop here and then I will move for tb tb is high for this and for this so let's see what we got here 0 0 1 it means qa complement qb complement x or for this one I have qa qb x complement so this is what we got from the table and uh, finally we will see for the output y and it is high for this two cases it means 1 0 0 so q a q b complement x complement or I have q a q b complement x so let's see if we can do some minimization or not I can take q a q b complement common so q a q b complement and we have x complement or x and everyone knows that x complement or x is equal to 1 so I have q a q b complement and 1 and finally I have q a q b complement as my y so we are done with our step number 8 and finally we can move to our last step which is the implementation of the circuit now you can easily implement by using these expressions your circuit you have to make two flip-flops the first one is a flip-flop then you have to make the second flip-flop this is the b flip-flop ta is the input tb is the input and qa is the output qb is the output and finally you have to find out the y you can easily implement it by using the logic gates you have to use the three input and gate and or gate to implement ta similarly you will use three input two and gates and one or gate two input or gate and you will use uh, two input and gate for y so I hope you can do it let's not waste time on it you have already done these things thousands of time so these are the nine steps required for the implementation purpose of our clock sequential circuit 